Hi, this is the Golden Salamander with a dreams tutorial on how to set up grid-based movement. By this I mean how to move an object or a character one space at a time. So if we go into play mode here and we're controlling the blue block whenever we press a direction on the D-pad. We can also do the same for a character and possess this guy and he moves in much the same way, one space at a time. So you might find this useful in a puzzle game or just when you need to uh, move things a precise distance. And I'll show you the setup for the object first and then the character. Uh, make sure you've got a grid on. And I've got the block set up here and the way it works is with teleporters. With four teleporters, one for each direction, and when you press a direction on the controller, it teleports one space. Teleporters work with tags, and the tag basically tells the teleporter where to go. So there's four tags as well. And you need these tags to always be around your object. And that means you need to attach each tag to a hidden block. Let's have a look at those. So each hidden block has a directional tag and each of the teleporters corresponds to those tags. Now, if we look over here, I want to show you something important about the position of the tag. I've got a tag snapped onto this block and it's right in the center of that block where it needs to be. But when you initially try to snap a tag on, you'll notice that it's off to the side usually. So you want that in the center. So if you grab it and move it, and you'll see the the triangle symbol pop up there saying to align it to the grid if you press that it will align it perfectly and this is an important step uh, if you don't have it um, right in the center the object is going to move slightly to the left or right or up or down when it teleports and your game is not going to work properly so you need to center the gizmo and you also need to do the same thing for the teleporter gadgets. So you'll see each of these teleporters, the gizmo is right in the center. Another thing you'll notice is these signal manipulators. If I open one of these up, you need one for each teleporter. And if you set the signal manipulator to pulse that on, it doesn't matter how long you hold the directional button down, it will convert this signal to a pulse of just the right amount to move the object once. If you don't have these signal manipulators, the object will keep teleporting while you're holding down the button and it will try to reach the tag and keep moving while you do while you do so. So that's basically how that one works. I'll quickly mention this one over here, which is a slightly different method before I go on to the playable character. And so the red block works in almost exactly the same way, but it uses the left stick rather than the D-pad. 
If you prefer to use the left stick, you just need to add a couple of splitters for each teleporter. And these come in before the signal manipulator. Splitters are a bit more complicated. Uh, what you're doing is essentially splitting the 360 degree movement of the stick into four discrete directions. So the first splitter gives it either an up down or a left right movement. And the second splitter chooses whether it's gonna be left or right or up or down. So onto our character. And this guy works a little bit differently to the objects. So you could set it up in exactly the same way as a block and just let him teleport everywhere. But it might look a bit unrealistic. Instead, you probably want to see the character walk. And for this to work, I'm using the follower gadget. Followers also work with tags. So you might think, okay, I'll just attach some tags to some hidden blocks and group those blocks to the player. But this doesn't really work. If we look at this character over here, and to get him to work, I'll just turn this off. We'll possess this guy. You see that his movement isn't quite right. Firstly, he just kind of shuffles along, but he doesn't, he always faces the same direction when he walks. And second of all, he's not moving one space at a time, which is not what we want at all. So the solution to this is quite simple. Here I'm using the same system of hidden blocks as the original object together with uh, the original block in the center which is also hidden. This time the controller center is set to remote controllable and since we'll be taking possession of the character, and so now whenever we press one of the directional buttons, we're controlling the group of hidden blocks and the character at the same time. I'll move this back and I'll just hide this group for now so we can focus on the character. Notice here that the, the D-pad is not uh, plugged into the puppet interface to make it walk. And instead of having four followers, we're only using one follower. So whenever the player presses any direction, uh, he's going to follow uh, the group of hidden blocks. Now, why only the one follower? Well, that's because we're only using one tag, and that's a new tag that I've put on the on the center block, which you can't see at the moment. But so the center blue block now has a tag called target, and that is what the player is going to be. Uh, chasing. There are two more gadgets here. One is a look at rotator and I've set this to maximum speed so that he quickly almost instantaneously uh, rotates in the to look at the direction that he's about to walk in. And finally we have a counter here which links up to the follower. 
And the reason for the counter is similar to why we used signal manipulators to move the original object. Um, in this case, we don't just want the character to follow the hidden blocks while we've got our thumb on the directional button because this will introduce imprecise movement. What the counter does is say, let me know when the button is pressed and I'll keep following until I reach my target. I had thought that I would need to make this more complicated by resetting the counter each time the target was reached, but this turned out to be unnecessary. Well, if you have any questions about this tutorial or requests for more Dreams tutorials, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to respond if it's not too advanced. That's it for now. I hope you found this useful and see you next time.